In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about free energy and the Gibbs free energy change equation. So the Gibbs free energy change can tell you which way a reaction will tend to proceed. So an exergonic reaction, so if you calculate this out and find that delta G is negative, can proceed spontaneously without having to be coupled to another reaction. But an endergonic reaction, in other words, if delta G is positive, has to be coupled to an exergonic reaction in order to proceed. Or in other words, it's non-spontaneous. But what is free energy anyway? So we know from the first law of thermodynamics that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. But we also know from the second law of thermodynamics that every time energy is transformed or transferred, some of that energy becomes less useful for doing work. So free energy is the energy that's useful for doing work. So when we think about this, it makes sense because anything that's going to proceed spontaneously means that some of that energy has to get less useful for doing work. In other words, the amount of free energy has to decrease. Take a moment to answer this question. So if delta G is negative, less than zero, for a reaction under certain conditions, then under those conditions, the reaction is going to be exergonic, which is a fancy word for spontaneous. Exergonic means it decreases the amount of free energy. So let's go through the terms of the free energy change equation. Now, delta G is the free energy change. And as we already said, if delta G is positive, then we're talking about a non-spontaneous reaction. And if delta G is negative, then we're talking about a spontaneous reaction. The next term is delta H, or enthalpy. That means the change in the potential energy of the reacting molecules. In other words, delta H is saying whether we're absorbing energy or whether we're losing energy. Then if delta H is positive, then that means we're absorbing energy. Because we're looking at this from the perspective of the reacting molecules. And if delta H is negative, it means that I'm releasing energy. And the next term is delta S, or the change in entropy of the reacting molecules. So we're just looking at the reacting molecules. So you can think of the reacting molecules for delta H and delta S as of this box. Remember, if I'm putting energy into that box that I'm adding energy. In other words, delta H is going to be positive. Same thing for entropy. You can think of if I'm increasing the entropy of the reacting molecules, then it's going to be positive. On the other hand, if I'm losing energy or entropy, then delta H or delta S are going to be negative. And finally, that T that's being multiplied with the delta S is temperature. And that's temperature in Kelvin. And something to keep in mind about Kelvin, so it's always going to be positive. So we always know that our T is going to be positive. So here's a question for you. Ice melting, which absorbs energy, happens spontaneously at relatively high temperatures, but does not happen spontaneously at low temperatures. What is the sign of delta H for ice melting? Go ahead and pause the video if you're still thinking about this question. So remember, delta H is going to be negative if we're releasing energy and positive if we're absorbing energy. And right here in the question, it tells you that ice melting absorbs energy. So our delta H is going to be positive. 
So what about the sine of delta g? Again, pause the video if you're still thinking about this. And remember, delta g is going to be positive if it's non-spontaneous. And it's going to be negative for a spontaneous reaction. And here we see that at some temperatures, at relatively high temperatures, ice will melt spontaneously. But it's not spontaneous at other temperatures. In other words, the sine of delta G depends on the temperature. So what about at room temperature? So is ice melting spontaneous at room temperature or non-spontaneous? As most of us have seen, we, ice melting is spontaneous. Or in other words, that delta G is going to be negative. We're going to decrease the free energy when ice melts. Take a moment to work on this one at your own. Find the sign. So plus or negative for delta G, delta H, and delta S for ice melting at room temperature. Go ahead and pause the video if you're still working on this on your own. So we know that ice melting at room temperature is spontaneous. In other words, it decreases the free energy. So delta G is going to be negative. As we talked about before, we also know that it absorbs energy. So our delta H is going to be positive. We're putting energy into our reacting molecules. So what about delta S? There are a couple ways we can think about this. We can either look at the equation and use that to figure out delta S, or we can think about what we know about physically what's going on here. So first I'm going to look at the equation, and then I'm, we're going to look at physically what's going on here. So we already know that delta G is negative, and then we get it by taking delta H, which is positive, and subtracting off whatever delta S is. So we're trying to find the sine of delta S. So could the sine of delta S be negative? Well, let's see. We need to end up with a negative number. We're taking a positive number minus delta S. So if delta S were negative, that would be minus a negative number, or in other words, adding a positive number. So we know that that can't work out, or else delta G would be positive. But does it work out the other way? Let's just make sure. So again, we have delta G, a negative number, equals a positive number, minus, and if delta S is a positive number, we have a negative number, equals a positive number, minus a positive number. So as long as this T delta S is bigger than delta H, then delta G can be negative. So in this case, our delta S is positive. So this also makes sense given what we know about ice and water. So we know that entropy can be thought of roughly as a measure of disorder and slightly more rigorously as a measure of how many ways a system can look. So for looking at ice here, we see it as this very ordered structure, and there are only so many ways I can make this pretty ice lattice with all of the water molecules making hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. Whereas in liquid water, I've got this more disordered state where all of these water molecules are kind of bumping around a bit more than in the ice, and they're breaking and making hydrogen bonds, and there are a lot more ways for the water molecules to be organized in liquid water than in ice. Or in other words, the entropy is greater in liquid water than in ice. So to sum up, for reaction to proceed spontaneously, it must decrease the free energy. Or in other words, decrease the energy that's useful for doing work. And the second law of thermodynamics tells us that. And we can use Gibbs free energy change to calculate this and tell us whether a reaction will tend to proceed spontaneously.